Okay, I gotta restart this. Uh, down, major allergy attack down here. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, uh, trying to figure out where, why it's so intense. I can see the dog toys next to me is making me, it's like crazy. My face is gonna blow up. Anyway, so my last, uh, video I just did, I, I couldn't continue to finish it. I couldn't, I couldn't get it out. I, I had a nose itch really bad. I want to scratch my face off. But, uh, my, my video that I just did was about the, uh, the, the massive theft from Gavin Newsom and all the other crooked kleptocrats is in charge of everything and taking all the money from everybody. So let's, let's take a second to, to explain the financial mechanism of the world. Okay. Or let's just, just, just bring it down to America. Let's get the American financial mechanism down for everybody out there. The left or right or wherever you are or burn it down and it's equal rights and I want to do this and oh I'm a gangster thugging in the hood well gangster are you are you thugging thugging financial mechanism their X amount of money that they get normally out of GDPs gross domestic products okay everything made bought sold in America okay all the money is ever made there's an upper tier and a lower tier and that is it everybody is somewhere in those two tiers in, uh, in America. If you're at the very bottom tier, you're g gang banging and thugging and doping in the streets, killing people or something you don't even own, fighting over your hood, which you don't own your hood. You don't own the ground. It's not your property. You're just playing into the game of symphony destruction. You keep the drugs pushed that's coming up from Mexico. You keep shoving heroin and you know all that stuff to the people got stuck by... Purdue Pharma that was passed out by the doctors. That was a major change in, in the American society that nobody's talking about. That destroyed destroyed millions of lives. Millions. That was Big Pharma and the medical community did that. To all of us. Okay, so, but in this mechanism you have the upper tier which is 14% of the gross domestic product is healthcare. They are the top kleptocrats of the entire system. They own 14% of every dollar spent, sold, whatever, is big health care. People say, that's, that's great. That, 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 no, no that's, that's not great. That's not great. That's not, that's not good. That's not good at all. That's, that's a signal to anybody that would be looking at a financial mechanism saying, why does this happen? So let's just, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back this up. I want, I wonder what the, what the big industry, medical industry is actually making. How much of the GDP is, is a uh, big farm is a uh, medical? Okay, let's see that. What's fourteen percent? Wonder where we're at now. Oh, there's something going on here. <laughs> yeah, that may not work now. I did makers of oxycotton and something went weird on my computer. By the way. Uh, how much of the GDP is uh, sorry daddy's hands oh, hair you know, just worker, working hands okay let's see if these guys are actually going to tell us the truth huh 13% <laughs> who said that 1.2 trillion dollars. 2020 pharmaceutical market was valued at 1.27 trillion dollars. This is a significant increase from 2001. Oh wow! So you got to figure. 2001 it was 290 billion dollars. As of 2020, it was 1.27 trillion dollars. Um, global pharmaceutical market. Let's see how big is they they they've skewed this. Yeah, yeah, you see, yeah. Okay, well, this is where they changed it again. So now it's like a, another little thing. The you click on says uh, about 1.27 trillion U.S. dollars as of 2020. The total global pharmaceutical market was valued at about 1.2 trillion U.S. dollars. Where what about America? I, I swear I was reading that the pharmaceutical was 14% of the GDP. 
Pharma companies in the U.S. Let's see, pharmaceutical industry. So Johnson & Johnson, another U.S. company that has made a big impression in the world with the pharmaceutical segment of its operation to be a record $45.6 billion U.S. 2020. That's a lie. Lie. Okay. We have to see the, how much <laughs> these guys... I I swear the US GDP, so let's let's get this in a caps, okay? Is the medical. Um you don't want to see what the industry's worth. US healthcare spending grew four point six percent, two thousand nineteen reached three point eight trillion dollars or eleven thousand five hundred eighty two dollars per person just roll that through your palate for a minute just kind of grind that at the top of your palate Ooh, ready like peanut butter right <laughs> as the share of the nation's gross domestic product health spending accounts for 17.7 percent <laughs> cms.gov i'm sorry the medical community and all medical expenses is actually 17.7% of the entire gross domestic product of America. Just gotta say. I mean, I'm not being rude. Not being rude. Just saying. <laughs> what is the most powerful entity in the United States? What is the most powerful financial mechanism in the entire country? The medical mechanism. The medical industry. Go by a hospital. It's like a it's like a NASCAR race. They're all piling in there for everything. Parking lots are completely clack, cracked, full, or packed full of people. I gotta go get my pills. I gotta go get my pills. The doctor's off. I had doctor's appointment at 2 o'clock. Oh. I don't go to doctors much. I really don't. I guess I'm blessed that way, right? Or no, I avoided the heart surgery. They told me I wasn't going to live it past 1998. I had five years to live before I had to have a pig valve put in my heart. Guess what happened? It's a 2021 going on 22. So where would I have been in the 17.7% the of gross domestic product at that time? Or this time in history? Seven, eight heart surgeries later. See, see what I'm saying? So the world or America needs to wake up. Lobbied by Big Pharma. This needs to stop. That needs to stop. People got to get it through your head. It's, it's, it, everything. This sent, bought, sold, trade in America. 17.7% is the medical industry. And tell me you're not being lied to. Tell me you're not being poisoned. Tell me that an industry that has taken 17.7% .7 of a healthy country... Americans were healthy, strong, powerful people at one time. Came out of World War World War II like a like a just a, a just a powerhouse. And now after all the wars and the Bushes and the Clintons and, and the Obamas and you know then we had Trump and now we got we're back to the Obama administration with uh, sleepy Joe Biden and with the drug epidemic. Purdue Pharma got a pill, we will fix everything. Especially for you guys down there in the Ozarks and rural America. This will be the best pill ever. They tried to hand me that pill one time. Ah, doctor prescribed. Give it to the doctor. Free trial packet of oxycodones. I said, no. No, I don't want your oxycodones. Well, this is brand new out of the doctors, out of the, out of the pharmacy. This is a non-addictive, perfect. This is a new type of painkiller. I said, no. You nuts? A little war tab. Broke shoulder. Broke my shoulder right in half. Just, just, that's why it raises up. Bust that thing right in half. I took lower tabs because they're, they're not as addictive. I, I learned. You know, they're like, the first thing they said when I walked in with a broken ankle, I pumped milk. They said, hey, we got these pills for you. I said, I just died. I've been dead. I died for over two minutes. I went into hypothermic shock in a snowstorm. Died from shock, came back to life, and I felt great. Thank you, but no thank you. There they were. 
pills. Oh, a little, little cup I probably paid, Dixie cup probably paid $10 for with the Oxycontin where it gives us, here you go, Rick, take this. Lab heroin. Where are my pills? Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta fight that, that pain. Watch it happen. No, thank you. No, thank you. They tried to kill me just like they've tried to kill most of us over, the, over their time or get us severely addicted. And they try to survive the rest of our lives as heroin addicts. And uh, we can all follow along that line to understand how somebody close to us have died due to the 17.7% of the gross domestic product. Now you say healthcare industry is great. They're great. They save lives. They do save lives. They do save lives. But the problem is they set back why the opioid epidemic killed millions. They set back. They didn't stop it. Well, yeah, there's still this doctor's passed out too many pills. Well, the feds are regulate. You don't have to have, you don't, if you have to take morphine, like I've seen people get morphine. If you don't have to take, if you have to take morphine, we used to, wounded veterans that were wounded in World War II were given shots of morphine in their leg as they're dying with their guts blown out. Doctors prescribe morphine. Fentanyl, yeah, fentanyl is coming in. Fentanyl is huge, huge. You're on death's doorstep or getting ripped to, to pieces. Yeah, well, okay, that's, that's great. But usually those people end up addicted. Why? Because they're getting they're on the brink of death. You know, morphine, morphine, morphine. My legs cut off morphine. Not heroin. Uh, well, give you guys, you got a backache, huh? My back's broke. I got, got a lot of pain back here. Well, here's a prescription of this. You're gone. We'll see you in the funny paper papers in a few weeks. That's what happened. That's what happened. But nobody's held accountable. There's this lawsuit against Purdue Pharma. It, so what? So what? The people that orchestrated the opioid epidemic need to be held accountable. Not the Trump administration. Oh, we're going to... January 6th is going to be... It's the worst day ever. No, the worst day ever was the day that you put Oxycontins on the market. You want to put blame or blame lies. All those involved in the big pharma move to put Oxycontins in, on the shelf or to give to the patients, to give the doctors, should be in federal prison right now Beaten and flogged. But no, there's nothing. Poof. Poof. That money that was made by Big Pharma that did that and all connected should be seized and distributed to those that have lost loved ones due to the opioid epidemic. But we don't put blame or blame lies, right? That's how this works. They flip it on you. I'll give you an example. We'll just got to take the COVID outbreak. Well, we got a variant starts out in India. We're not going to stop travel, blah, blah. Okay, well, you just spread it across the world. You kill all these other people. And the people that actually flew from there were the hosts. They were patient ones that brought it across borders and across the world. Well, you're going to get it anyways. No, two years of being locked up and people decide to fly from India to, to the UK. Those people are responsible for spreading the virus. Those people are responsible for moving the virus across continents, across oceans. Those that flew from the Omicron variant from South Africa to Utah are responsible for the death of other people if they die from the variant that they bring. Those that left Wuhan, when they said lockdown, those people are all responsible for spreading the virus and killed people. They knowingly and willingly took that chance to spread the virus across the planet. Now, the people that left prior had no idea they're not included. But there's action and reaction, just like with the big pharma. They produced it. The doctors distributed it. And nobody pays the piper. Meanwhile, San Francisco's a garbage hole. Seattle's a mess. The whole western coast is just completely turmoil. People running from it daily. Newsom's a complete dictator, crackhead that just everybody loves so much they're revolting back in. Imagine, wonder why. With the mass drug epidemics, people are running all over. Suicides are through the roof. Uh, murders are happening all over. 
and Brian Williams quits because they're burning the, the building down with us inside. That's what you do to the victims when you steal everything from them. You leave no evidence of what you did. That's what a criminal does. A criminal organization goes and burns it down, hides the bodies. That's what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. We all need to wake up. We got to get together and say, okay, I don't care if you're, you're green. I don't care. I don't care if you want to use this bathroom or that bathroom. I don't care. It's all strife. I don't care if you are, have a red bandana or a blue bandana. If you think this is your hood, or that's your hood, or you're a dope and thug for them. We all need to stand together. Instead of uh, burning people down, cities down, and, and shooting each other nightly, why don't we? Uh, why don't we all organize community organizations and we all stand together as one and say we're done with this? We're done with the violence. We're done with the the drug use. We're going to go down Skid Row. We're going to round everybody up. We're going to we're going to conquer this with love. We're not going to see people sleeping on the streets. Maybe, you know, for their own good, the tough guys gang banging, thug and hood down the road. I got my nine, my Glock. Okay, well, go get those people off the streets and keep them under control until they're clean. I'm just doping and thugging. Okay, well, they they made all the money while well, you're doping and thugging. Okay, selling dope and drugs, killing other people because all you care about is yourself. Well, in the end, they're going to throw you in that. You're dead, too. You're dead. It's just going to happen. You're not going to get out of this alive. But yeah, you, you had your dope and thug on for what? Two minutes? Your life? Yeah. Well, guess what? Age keep, catches up with you. Fight for the good of the people. Fight for the good of the people. Of us. This great experiment called America. If you go to China, they'll throw you in a hole, dude. You'll be all gangster and thugging and they'll, you'll disappear. You'll be worm bait in a, week, in a day. You don't care. We either got to become a society that says, I'm not going to stand to see this happen anymore. I'm done. I'm done with the drugs. Fentanyl, heroin, all gone. If you bring that stuff across my borders, you don't have to worry about the law enforcement. You got to worry about us. Us. How do we fix all this? We take the money they already stole from us. The people of the United States. The us. Get together. See, no more race baiting us. No more desegregation and separation and strife. We form a 336 million person army. And we say we're done. All you idiots in Washington are fired out gone today we will impeach all of you you are gone use every mechanism pull all of our buddies together and get them all out send Newsom down the street send Newsom, Newsom down the street so you, you made a crap hole of this place dude what you the gangs and the drugs you're not even mentioning are fixing it the murders the robberies everything else everybody that's involved in the robberies and the murders you are cannon fodder. You're nothing. You'll never be nothing. You're worm bait. You'll be dead locked up in prison. Eating prison food the rest of your life. Not for you. Not for your hood. Not for your, your bros. Your homies. Your whatever. For them. For their drugs. Their epidemic. That's, that's my message today. That's my message to everybody today. Today's going really slow, but uh, it, until we unite on the sacred hoop, you can look it up for yourself. The sacred hoop, all, all of our colors are sacred colors of every race. We have to stand together, unite on the sacred hoop. We, we, we are one people. We are one, one people. Nothing else. Nothing else. We, we, have, to be, we have to do this. We have to unite as a people. John F. Kennedy came around and tried to change this establishment. Look what happened to him. They cannot silence 336 million people if we stand as one. The HU band, you know, was, came here to the, to the U.S. to 2019 just before the outbreak. And they were, they were talking about unity of the world. These are the Mongols. United, we were one people. And uh, 
they wanted to, we were all relatives, we, we have to stop this insanity. And the outbreak happened. They will do everything to protect their mechanism that they put in place. This is them at the top. This is the rest of us. They're not us. Lawyers, all of them, they are not us. Kleptocrats at the top, one and a half percent, they're not us. Whatever they do, whatever they think doesn't matter because they're just stealing everything from us. They have. Remember that. We are us and they are them. There is an us and them. And that's not being prejudiced. That's being factual. That's being factual. Kick Nancy Pelosi out. Kick Schumer out. Biden, Harris, every one of them. Throw them all out. Drain the swamp was just basically something to keep you guys all busy. Why they stole all the money. It's up to you, California. It's up to you, Washington. It's up to New York. District of Columbia. And the entire rest of the United States. To finally, once and for all, tell them. We are done. We are united. And we want you all out. We're going to remake the system. Because you control all the future wealth of all of us. We're tired of dying in your wars. That you create on our streets. We're tired of dying of the depression. We're tired of dying from big pharma. We're tired of being robbed, used, drained. You have all that wealth you stole from us. And for our own good, apparently, to steal everything from us. It's distributed. Wealth isn't distributed. This isn't communism. Communism. Anybody says, capitalism, communism. The first time they passed a bill... There was a trillion dollars for the COVID outbreak. This was no longer capitalism. This isn't capitalism anyways. They take money from the Federal Reserve, print off fake dollars on people's heads, using their social security numbers to give them debt to give to you. That's not capitalism. That's a communist mechanism in a supposed capitalist market. It's not a free market because try to start a business, find out what happens to you. It's not a free market either. That's the big illusion of the American system. What I can take for you makes me better. Well, what you take from the people using a, a social security number to generate fictitious wealth is not capitalism. That's theft and communism. The state prints the money digitally and you read the benefits. You're a part of the communist mechanism. You're already in communism. Just a, an ultra form of it. The best form that was ever created. It's the biggest lie ever told. When the feds take no action and you don't make any money from the feds or using federal money or federal welfare monies or federal contract money or federal anything that comes off the, to the, the, the debt of future taxpayers of money that doesn't even exist, then you're a part of the communist because just like in Russia, during communist time, you're working for the state. The federal government using people's fictitious number and their future dollars in tax revenue, which is completely corrupt, wrong anyways, taxes like that. Double, triple taxation without what they call representation. And you're benefiting off that. That's, that's, not, that's not capitalism. That's working for the communist state. Now, if you make a product, you sell a product to an individual that's using federal money that's printed off out of the Federal Reserve. There was an organization set up for the banking systems, not for the people. It was just for, for the people, but still for the people. That's debt dollars. You're just stealing the future. You're not making money. You're a part of the problem. If people flip out, they'll be like, oh, this is this is not true, and it's not that's just capitalism and this isn't this isn't capitalism. You're 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 working for the state. You're living off people's future dollars that they haven't even collected in taxes yet. Remember what we came here for. To escape to escape the, the lords of the land in England. Your England was dominating the English Empire was ruthless in taxation. Ruthless. The American government and the states are ruthless in taxation. Ruthless. They just devise different little names for each one of their taxations. 
clearly Medicare med, that they borrow still the money anyway. So you drain the Medicaid, Medicare, the Medicare fund. They drain the the Social Security funds. They there it, it's it's all a Ponzi scheme. It's all a Ponzi scheme. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's uh, 25 minutes. The last video got cut short. Uh, this is a uh, basically, I think this is kind of like a Western States media, uh, Morningstar Times, uh, being uploaded to 45 News Utah. So, anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. I got dogs out there whining. Got to go take care of the dogs. You guys have a great day. It's great to talk to you guys, and I will talk to you later.